Welcome to CGNet series, Getting the Most Out of Microsoft Link 2013. In this series, we will provide you with not only an introduction to Link's many great features, but also to tips and tricks that will make Link much more useful and easy to use. Throughout this series, we will present information about presence, audio and video calling, meetings, screen sharing, whiteboards, Skype connectivity, and much more. We hope you stay tuned and, and, and hook up a connection. Uh, let me give you an example. Here I have a Skype account and my link account. And I'm going to try and reach my Skype account from my link account. So I put in my name, the same one that you see up on the top on the Skype thing. And the only one it gives me is this one. So that is not the one I want. I want the Skype account. So I put in my Skype name and no matches. In other words, there's no way you can do it with just using the Skype name. The reason for that is that for a Skype user to be able to communicate with a link user, the Skype user has to have be logged on as a Microsoft account. That's like a Microsoft Live account or what they used to call a Passport account. Anyway, you have to get yourself a Microsoft account. Now, how do you do that? Well, the first thing you do is you sign out of your existing link account. That takes you back to this screen. Now, what you do then is if you have a Microsoft account, you just click on sign in with Microsoft account. We'll do that uh, now. So we say, well, I want to sign in with a Microsoft account. OK, do you have a Microsoft account? Well, if you do, you just fill out the screen. If you don't, you have to sign up for one and then you sign up here. So that is what you're going to have to do in order to you're going to have to register and get yourself a Microsoft account. And once you get yourself a Microsoft account, then you're going to have to go back here and you're going to have to fill it in. Now, I have one, so I'm going to put that in here. Okay, so now I'm signed in, but instead of being signed in as Tim Haight, I am now signed in as Tim Haight at Outlook.com. So this is an account with a Microsoft ID. Now, if you were doing this for the first time after you got your micro, after you signed in with your Microsoft ID, you would get a screen saying, uh, "Do you already have a Skype account, or do you have to set one up?" And since you already have one, you would just click on I already have my Skype account and then it would say, do you want to merge these two accounts? And you would merge the two accounts. And after you went through those stages, they take you back and you'd be where we are here right now with a Skype account logged on with a Microsoft account. Now, once that happens, then you can add the Skype account to your uh, link user list. The link user then goes to here and clicks on the add contact button and goes to add a contact not into my organization and clicks on Skype. Now, not everybody that has link when they go through that routine are going to be able to click on Skype. Some people will come in there and they will find that little Skype icon missing. And that will happen because your administrators haven't worked on your link 2013 server and set it up so that it could communicate with Skype. And that takes a while. You've got to register uh, a, a connectivity uh, identifier with Microsoft and do some things. And so it may take your administrators a while to do that. But when it's done, then you get the little Skype thing that you can click on. And then you get this window that says Add Skype Contact. It, it says I am address. That's not Tim Haight. That's the um, Tim Haight at Outlook.com. It's the email address. So I'll put in Tim Haight at Outlook, or whatever you used as the username on your Microsoft account. And then you can, there's, it will always, it will always be in the other contacts folder. Uh, you can set it with different levels of information. So since I trust myself, I'm going to make myself a colleague, which means I can get my note location and contact information. And I will click OK. But if you want to be cautious, you put uh, external contact, which is the default. And then you click OK. And what happens at this point 
is that a new contact is generated down here at the bottom. But as you see, it says offline. You shouldn't let that worry you too much. What you do is you, 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 you go over here and you click on the IM and you say hi or something. And it goes up there and it says we couldn't send the message because Tim Haight is unavailable or offline. But what you do then is you go over to Skype. Your, your Skype user has to well, realize that they're going to be notified. They're going to get something here. And they have to say accept. Now that's a little tricky. See, in other words, they're going to be sitting around in their contacts. They're not necessarily going to get any notification. They're just going to have to click to their recent tab, double click on this, and they'll get this. And then you say accept. Okay, so now that they've accepted it, Tim Haight is now in the recent list. The Tim Haight link is also on the list of contacts from having accepted the invitation you found in the recent list. Now we, we go mouse over the picture, click on the I am, and we say hello. And this thing goes here, this goes here, and you see the hello. And I say, well, how are you? And that shows up there. And so now we've got I am going between Link and Skype. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want more information or would like to discuss how we can help you implement LINK, use the addresses on the screen. We hope to hear from you.